So what are pleasurable emotions? Well, I've placed pleasurable, pleasurable emotions into two categories. Uh, one are a group are uh, the pleasurable emotions that are actually in harmony with love and truth. So they are the emotions that you have an experience of pleasure mm -hmm. that that happen when you are in harmony with God's love and God's truth. Yeah. And then I'd put the second category as a whole group of emotions that are all based around addictions where that you think are pleasurable. So, <laughs> so a lot of times they are not pleasurable to the soul because they cause damage to the soul or they cause damage to other people's soul. And they also um, are not pleasurable in the long run. In other words, they're temporarily pleasurable. Uh -huh. They give you this sort of instant satisfaction to suppress a fear or to suppress some anger or whatever other emotion you're attempting to suppress with it, but they're not really pleasurable in the long term. Mm. So if we look at the two groups of emotions, let's focus on the first group, which are the ones that cause you real long term pleasure. They're the ones that you experience that are completely in harmony with God's love and truth. And what I mean by that is that when we are living our life in complete harmony with God's love and complete harmony with God's truth, then we have continuous pleasure. And the pleasure will be of all sorts of natures. So there'll be this, this beautiful, happy, joyful feeling. Sometimes it will be sexual pleasure, depending on what you're engaging in there. But a lot of the times it will be just a general pleasure mm -hmm. about your day-to-day -day life that occurs because you've got your life into harmony with God's love and God's truth. Now on the earth today, hardly anybody experiences uh, any portion of that really, yep. because most, most people are not engaged in pleasurable emotions that are in harmony with God's love and truth. Uh -huh. So would you say that's things like joy and excitement and um, all these kind of pleasurable things that we associate with pleasure, but from what you're saying, they are coming from the soul, the soul's experience, whereas the second group of emotions you talked about was about suppressing some part of the soul's experience? Yes, remember yeah. in previous uh, FAQs on this subject of emotions, we've yeah. talked about what happens when the soul, when you suppress your soul's energy. Mm -hmm. Remember all of these emotions are energy in motion. So pleasurable emotions are pleasurable, if we went back to a pure definition, it's energy that is pleasurable to experience in motion. Yes. So it's not just you know, sitting there and, and not experiencing anything, it's actually having a f physical and emotional experience. And, and these pleasurable feelings or sensations are all going to be based, they're all going to be coming from your own soul, uh -huh. but they can also come from the soul of others. So in other words, they can come from God's soul or come from other people's soul into your soul but they'll be all in complete harmony with God's love and truth. Mm -hmm. In other words, there'll be nothing out of harmony with God's love or truth that causes this permanent pleasure to exist. Mm -hmm. So we are capable of experiencing permanent pleasure. God created us in that way. But of course, the majority of people on earth uh, have very little pleasure and most of the pleasure they have is not of this first type. Uh -huh. Most of the pleasure they have is of the second type, and that is getting their addictions met. And this kind of pleasure is very temporary in its nature. It's fo focused on suppressing, uh, usually suppressing fear or suppressing anger or rage. And, and as a result, it only can result in, any temp in a seeming temporary pleasure. But uh, unfortunately, it also results in a damage to the soul of the individual and the soul of other people. Mm -hmm. And that's not the kind of pleasurable emotions in the long run that you'd probably want to experience. Of course, we're very focused on having those emotions experienced because to obtain the, the first group of emotions, the pleasure based on in harmony with God's love and truth, you have to bring your life into harmony with God's love and truth. And most people, of course, don't want to do that yeah. or have a deep resistance to doing that for many reasons. And so what they finish up doing is seeking out temporary pleasure through the second group of emotions, which are all revolving around addictions. Mm. So like, I feel that if we understand that sometimes we will see, feel like we're feeling pleasure when actually we're in an addiction and, and it's just a way of help, uh, helping us to avoid certain emotions. And also if we understand that these kind of pleasures will always result in the degradation of our soul, then we can start seeing the results of the different types of pleasure we engage in. 
And so in this second type of pleasure that you're describing, which is based around addiction, the fulfilment of an addiction, mm -hmm. uh, you're saying that it creates a degradation of our soul. And yes. from what we know about how the human soul functions, then we could um, understand that it's also going to lead to pain in the long term. Correct. Yeah. yeah, so it might be temporary pleasure for the moment yep. in the sense that we feel like we're, uh, you know, having an addiction met and so therefore we feel temporary pleasure. But the reality is we've degraded our own soul and usually the soul of others when we're engaging those things. And as a result, our, our own soul will feel more pain in the longer term. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like trying to have a temporary fix to a permanent problem. Mm -hmm. So whenever you attempt to have a temporary fix to a permanent problem when it comes to emotions, you will always experience more pain in the longer term. Yeah. So the only real way to fix any negative emotion is to actually permanently fix it and yeah. by experiencing it and letting it go. Yeah, right. So the, um, the pleasurable emotions that are in harmony with God's love and truth, they don't have from what you're saying, they don't have a negative result. They result Ever. in more pleasure and they Always. actually expand in our pleasure, yes. don't they? Yes, they don't have a negative result in the sense that they never have a negative result. Mm. And, uh, and, and this is an important thing that we need to understand. If we are having painful experiences in our lives, it's because we've previously probably chosen temporary pleasure based on addictions, which always causes painful experiences. Yeah. When we engage in true pleasurable experiences that are in harmony with God's love and truth, there is never a future painful consequence. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we will never have some future pain to have to endure or suffer or release because it doesn't create any future pain either or further pain inside of the soul. So this is the beauty of a true pleasure yeah. is, that, is that it's very pure in its nature. It's completely in harmony with God's love and truth. But also it has all of these advantages in that you don't have any future pain as a result of engaging in it. You don't have any future problems. You don't, have, you don't create any future pain or current pain for anybody else. And you don't damage your own soul in, in, in the engagement of that kind of pleasure. Mm. Whereas the second group of pleasures, if you like, which are all addictive in their nature, used to suppress or resist or distract yourself from other emotions. These kind of pleasures always result in future pain. They result in a degradation of your soul. They also generally result in the degradation of the soul of others and future pain for others mm -hmm. uh, if they don't experience the, that particular feeling that they have in that moment. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, it, it's very, very temporary in nature and causes an escalation of the pain that's inside of the soul. Yep. So, you know, we need to make sure really that the pleasure that we think we're experiencing is actually going to have long-term benefits to our life or it's just a short-term seeming benefit with all of these negative consequences. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is the problem that most people on earth face is that many times they engage in temporary pleasure, the second type of pleasure. Yeah. And unfortunately, it causes a degradation of their own soul and many deeper, f further painful experiences, mm. which they then try to mask with other temporary pleasures. Yes. And you end up in this cycle of, dis of degradation of your soul if you're not careful going down that track. And there's historically many, many billions of people have engaged in that behaviour. And hence, there is a lot of people who live uh, in the darkness of the, of the hells of the spirit world as a result of their desire for this kind of pleasure. Mm. 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 Great. Mm. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>